The Ruby Prince. Once in faraway Persia walked a beggar on the shore of a river. The river had suddenly shrunk, leaving behind a lot of mud. He searched for fishes which could have been left behind by the shrinking river. If I am lucky enough, maybe I will find at least two fishes today. Or, or maybe even three. Wow! This is so big and shiny. I wonder how many dinners I can buy with this stone. The beggar rushed to his friend who worked for the Shah in the royal kitchen. <gasps> Where did you find this? On the shore. Listen, friend, you have helped me a lot. I understand that you cannot give me any more free dinners. How many dinners you think this stone could buy me? Stone? This is a ruby, you fool. This could change your life. Take this to the shop immediately. And listen, ask for two big pots of gold in the return for this ruby. Two big pots? Yes, nothing below that. You understand? The beggar took his friend's advice and left to meet the Shah. The Shah was shocked. Never in his life had he seen a ruby this big. I will give you three pots of gold in return for this ruby. Will that do? <gasps> three pots of gold, sir. This is the best day of my life. The beggar took his three pots of gold and left. <laughs> this is precious. I will give this to my daughter on her 18th birthday. I am sure this will bring her great fortune. He placed the stone in a big trunk and sealed it with a huge lock. On the day of his daughter's 18th birthday, the Shah went to get the ruby. As soon as he unlocked the trunk... Uh, who are you? Sir, I... Guard! Thief! You stole my precious ruby! Hand it over to me right now! Sir, what thief would steal a ruby and lock himself in the trunk instead? But your ruby is gone, and that is the truth. I cannot bring your ruby back. I am here in place of it. I am the ruby prince, and I request you not to ask me how this happened. Ruby prince? You are a thief. You think it's that easy? I lose my precious ruby, find a man in my trunk, and I am not allowed to ask how? That is correct. I understand your trouble, sir. But no matter what, I cannot tell you where I came from. Ugh. If that's the case, then you leave me with no other option. Since I found you in a trunk in my palace, you will do as I say. You are now my servant. Yes, sir. The Shah wanted to have the Ruby Prince executed, but he couldn't. The prince's still eyes and his calm voice made it difficult for the Shah to make any such command. But he was still furious for having lost his precious ruby. Shah made the prince do odd jobs like gardening and cleaning the palace. But the prince never complained. In fact, he used every task as an excuse to go near the princess. He was falling hopelessly in love with her. That, that thief, how dare he steal from me? Ooh, what do I do about him? Wait, I have an idea. The next day, he called for the prince. Listen, there lives a dragon in the Persian waters. He is sinking all of our ships for months. Our trade is severely affected. Take my sword and defeat that dragon. That's an order! <gasps> what? Oh my! Ooh, that's crazy! Okay! 
as you say, your highness. But I would need a flute. I shall play it to draw the dragon out of the water in the forest. All right, but that won't help you. He is as dangerous upon land as he is in water. But this is the only way I can carry out your orders, sir. I cannot step into the water. The Shah agreed. Cannot step into the water? <laughs> what kind of a prince is he? I sent so many great warriors to fight this dragon. Nobody returned. He will meet the same fate as theirs. <laughs> the prince took his boat and reached the forest. He went to a large empty space right at the center and prepared to call the dragon out of the water. Land trembled as the dragon came closer. As the air became warmer, the prince knew that the dragon was close. <gasps> the dragon came down with full force, but the prince didn't move. And with one swift movement of his hand, I will spare your life, but promise me that you will not sink any more ships or trouble anyone ever again. The Ruby Prince returned to the palace. Everybody was shocked to see him. Your Highness, I did what you asked. The dragon will never return. You are a brave prince. I am very impressed, son. <sighs> I believe you now. I don't know who you are or where you came from, but I will respect your wish to never ask you that again. Tell me, what do you want? Your wish will be granted. Sir, I have fallen in love with your daughter. With your permission, I wish to ask her if she would marry me. <laughs> you have already won me over with your bravery. If she wishes to marry you, who am I to say anything? Shaw's daughter was equally impressed with the prince. She instantly agreed to marry him. The princess was a gentle lady. She dearly loved her husband. They both spent their days happily taking good care of their kingdom. But one question always bothered the princess. My love, I don't know anything about you. Who you really are. Please tell me where you came from. Please don't ask me that. I can never tell you. The day I do, you will lose me forever. It made the princess very sad. She loved her prince and wanted to know everything about him. Once, as they sat near the ocean, she tried to ask him again. Once again, the prince became sad and requested her to not force him. But why? Why can't I know? Please, please tell me. Ah, <sighs> you know I love you dearly. I can't see you suffer like this. If you must know, then I shall tell you who I am. I am... Ah! Help! Guards! Give me back my husband! The royal guards searched the entire ocean, but the prince was never found. The princess blamed herself. Everyone tried to explain how this cannot be her fault, but she wouldn't listen. <laughs> no! It is my foolish questioning that took him away. Princess could not bear the grief and fell seriously ill. Many doctors came to treat her, but nothing worked. The Shah was worried about his daughter. Then, one day, a maid entered her bedroom with strange news. Your Highness! Your Highness! Oh my! There were so many lights on the ocean last night. The, the, the genies danced. It was beautiful. Oh, what rubbish. There are no genies. Go away. But I saw him. He wore the brightest ruby on his head. And did, did you say ruby? I know you don't believe in genies, but I don't care about genies. Take me to that place. 
That night, Princess and her maid hid behind the bushes in the forest near the ocean. They waited there till it became dark. Then suddenly, they saw some lights flying up from the ocean. The lights suddenly transformed into beautiful genies and tiny young men. A while after rose the king of the ocean with his men. He wore a golden robe and held a scepter in his hand. Soon, the show began. Genies danced and men showed their tricks to the king. But the princess didn't care about any of this. Her gaze was fixed upon the man standing next to the king. She could never forget those ocean blue eyes. The love of her life stood there like a statue. <gasps> My prince! Then the princess did something very brave. She covered her face with a veil and came out of her hideout. She danced among the genies. She moved so beautifully that everyone stood there speechless. Amazing! For such a divine dance. Ask us whatever you want, and it shall be given to you. Your Majesty, I am the daughter of the Shah, wife of my ruby prince, who stands beside your throne. Please, please give me my husband back. I ask you for nothing else. The king was annoyed at this request and went back into the water and took the prince with him. No! Wait! No! Princess, look over there! The princess rushed to the shore. It was her prince. Before she could understand what happened, the ocean spoke. You can have him back, but don't forget how you lost him. Be wiser. Huh? Huh? My love! The whole kingdom rejoiced the return of their ruby prince. The princess was wiser from that day on. She never questioned her husband about his world under the ocean. She was happy to have him. The princess dearly loved her ruby prince. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> 